I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Even after Tony's build of the original Keyblade, so many of you are asking for something more. So we've been looking to do a Kingdom Hearts build for a long time. By far the most challenging is going to be the Keyblade called Oathkeeper. There's going to be a lot of forging of different parts, a lot of different fabrication going on, but I want to give Ilya a good template to start with so he can go ahead and get to forging. So I'm just initially drawing my template. Um, this is going to give us proper sizing and scale for when we do the forging. Probably going to cut the whole thing out of thin sheet metal. It's a big advantage to go ahead and have that full size template, not just a sketch to work from when you're doing the forging. You know, when you do forging, you kind of got to go with the flow and work with what it gives you, but uh, having an initial size and, and shape to start with is a huge advantage. I'm about to forge out one half of the Kingdom Hearts Oathkeeper blade. For this I chose a bar of 4140. It is pretty decent tool steel. In order to forge the hard blade, I have to turn this bar into a piece of square stock one by one inches. The hard shape can only be formed when the bar is square. The Nazel really makes quick work of this. He's able to reduce this down in about one heat. Any other hammer would take two or three. After reducing the stock, it's now time to start forging in that heart. He'll be using a lot of classical blacksmithing techniques during this stage. Afterwards, he'll then bevel it and turn that into a really sharp blade. After folding the bar over by hand, he's going to the Iron Kiss hammer now to crisp up that point. In order to get that heart shape, you gotta make two crisp points, not only at the top of the heart, but at the bottom. This work is somewhat different from standard blade making in that it looks more like architectural work. At a certain point, there will be a jump from basic architectural work to bladesmithing. Right now, after making my Z shape, I'm turning it into a heart shape. First, I trap this bend on the horn of an anvil and give it curvature right here. As I go, I have to move certain parts of this out of the way so I can get to them with a hammer. After the basic heart is formed, this is not the end because there will be a leap from architectural work to sword making. At that stage, I will be beveling the sides, making the blade thicker and sharp. Now that we have the heart shape form on the end, we have to draw out the bar to a length so that I can size the rest of the blade and get it cut on the plasma. So we're doing the key blade in a couple of different parts. Part of that is because it's actually very large and that'll allow us to heat treat and assemble and put things together in a little different manner than we might normally do on a standard construction for a sword. So I'm gonna plasma cut the main blade going up that you would cut with. I'm really excited to finally get this keyblade in my hands. We got our two pieces welded on here, so I'll go ahead and start by blending that weld off. And then I'm just gonna get in, everything gets beveled. Everything's a sharp edge, everything's gonna be a cutting edge. Now that we have both blades at their appropriate size, we can plasma cut the wings for the handle. Okay, so last night I went in and sculpted three sides of these wings. See, I removed a lot of material on the two inch wheel. I left one side to show you guys on camera. So we're gonna go to the two inch wheel over there, sculpt in, follow my lines that I drew with a Sharpie, and then use the big wheel for the back, and these things will be ready. We have a few minutes while we have to wait for the forges to get hot before we can heat treat these blades, so I figured I'd go ahead and start explaining this crazy layout we got going. What we did is we made both sides of the blades separately. We're gonna heat treat them separately because we don't have a big enough forge or quench tank to accommodate. After they're hardened, we'll go ahead and weld it together here. We'll also weld the overlap that goes behind the heart to the top spike here. Then we'll go ahead and weld our wings onto the middle section here. I'm gonna go ahead and plasma cut and do some forging on the mid handle. That'll get added after heat treat, and then we'll temper the whole thing, and then a lot of grinding and polishing after that. 
I'm going to be doing some polishing after the full assembly, but I really want to do as much as I can before we weld these pieces together. So we built this furnace using a couple of old kilns, a barrel, some K wool, and a weed burner. It's going to achieve the temperature without any difficulty. We've added charcoal to even it out or reduce oxygen, which reduces scale. For our key blade, we made both halves out of two different materials using two different methods. So for the heat treat, we're going to stick with that same theme. Ilya will be quenching into oil, and Carrie will be quenching his half into water. This is the final piece. This is the handle for our key blade. We're going to need a little extra thickness in the center here, so I'll lay down a few beads of weld to thicken it up a little bit before shaping. Before I can get to polishing the heart side of our sword, I need to get inside all those little grooves on the inside of the heart. To do that, I'm going to use this handheld sander. I don't really have any small contact wheels for the big sanders, so this is a must-have tool. Because all the parts of our key blade are all different thicknesses, John has to use some shims to get everything at the correct levels before welding them together. Today I'm working on the Kingdom Hearts build. I'm making the charms that are going to go on the sword. I'm starting with some flat wax and I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to make the Thea shell texture and form that's going to create our star and make it more puffy and rounded. After I get the wax carved and shaped the way I want it, I'm going to then invest it in the plaster and then we'll cast it in bronze. I've just finished investing and so our next step will be to let this dry for 24 hours and then we're going to put it in the kiln and it'll bring brought up to around 1200 degrees then brought back down to 1000 and we will cast tomorrow. So for our key blade, since we're going to be doing some pouring, we're going to do the star at the bottom and we're going to do the heart in the center. We figured we would make it from some keys. So I dug back into kind of my past, keys to my old house I grew up in, keys to my old shop for Baltimore Knife friend's car keys that got left at my house over the years. I'm gonna add a little borax to it, fire up the torch, melt them down, we'll make a little ingot, and that'll get added to the bronze that we use for the pour. With the flask at 1,000 degrees and the bronze over 2,100, we pour the metal. Once the material is no longer glowing, down in the 900 degree range, we'll quench and pull the piece out. So the hearts have been cast. This is a rough casting. I just lightly wire wheeled. This one I started to sand into a little bit. We're gonna make them nice and smooth and put a high finish on them. All right, we got the blade mostly polished. What I wanna show you guys now is how we're gonna lay those colors into the blade and the surrounding guard. I'm gonna use a torch. We're gonna run the colors from about 450 degrees, which gives you that nice straw color, up to around 650, maybe 700 that gets you into those blues and the purples. We have different thicknesses and metals here, so things are gonna heat up differently. You can see it changes really subtly, but if you're really paying attention, you can see that it's turning straw. And then right out the tips, I'm gonna lay a little extra heat on, highlight the purple like that. Then I'll draw that heat back a little bit, feather it out. It's kinda wild, even when you remove the heat, it still keeps spreading. I'll be careful and I'll go through and I'll even it out a little bit, but uh, that's pretty much what we're going for. We approach this weapon in a very different way, making it in multiple pieces with multiple different kinds of material. It all came together great, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. With such an extravagant keyblade, I'm sure the gates of your heart will be opened.
we would like to thank Dickies for sponsoring this episode and hooking us up with awesome work clothes. To check out more Dickies product, click the link in the description below.